This week on RUTV, we wrap up Black History Month with our very own Black Student Union. Then, we check out another one of our amazing RUHS clubs. Finally, we hop on over to RUTV's pop culture segment. So don't look away, because it all starts right now on RUTV. Good morning, Seahawks. Today is Friday, February 23rd, and I'm Sienna Lewis. And I'm Eleni Wonko. Happy Black History Month, Sienna. Happy Black History Month, Eleni. It's my favorite time of year. Me too. I love learning new things about black culture. That's why I'm so grateful for our Black Student Union Club. Same. They truly are great. Let's go to them now for more on Black History Month. Black History Month is the month of February, the month of my birth, and a month to, you know, get the black community to get together. Um, black History Month is just a time for people to um, remind themselves of the contributions that black people have made to this country and the world and to highlight their achievements. Uh, black History Month is important to me so that I could like have a connection to my culture, learn new things about my culture, and just meet new people, all people that are passionate about like our history and our achievement. Um, I think we often have like our go-to topics for Black History Month, such as slavery and also like activist movements, such as the civil rights movements. But I think that we should now like dive deeper into topics such as like the black writers and poets and engineers and mathematicians that were very impactful in the black community. Uh, common misconceptions about, I'm going to say about Black History Month in general, is that it has to only be about black people, but that's not true. We can definitely bring other people into it and like definitely have appreciation for all cultures. It's just like a time for us to also commemorate black achievement and black excellence. I think we often, for injustices, we look at police brutality, but I think that diving deeper into the quality of opportunities and educational opportunities that black people have, um, mostly in black concentrated communities, I think that would benefit us more. In the current day, I'm gonna have to go back to what Lauren was saying about opportunities for black people because as a person that has participated in STEM internships, like AP classes in STEM, one thing I notice is that most of the time I'm the only black kid there. So I would love to see like more black people like just taking initiative in the STEM field or any just any educational opportunities they have because they should know that they can actually do it. They shouldn't hold back. I think some common misconceptions are that black history should only be celebrated in one month. Um, black History Month was never meant to remain in one month. It was meant to be expanded so that it's incorporated to um, actual history because you cannot have American history or world history without including black history. Celebrating black history throughout the year, just live your life normally, but just like accept black history and learn new facts about black history. Like that's really all you have to do. Make sure to check BSU out at the lunch today in the Student Union. It's always fun to see students taking pride in their community. Another group on campus decided to celebrate their heritage at our RUHS library. Let's go to Grace for more. At RUHS, we are lucky to have access to a wide range of classes and clubs that are dedicated to celebrating a variety of cultures from around the world. Recently, some of our RUTV crew were invited to one of these celebrations hosted by Redondo's very own National Chinese Honor Society. We spoke to the club's president, Rebecca Fung, and one of our Chinese teachers, Miss Wong, to learn more about NCHS and this event. National Chinese Honor Society is an extracurricular and an academic club connected to our Chinese program for our students who really want to enhance their learning about the Chinese culture and the Chinese language. Being part of the society offers students opportunities to organize diverse activities and events, allowing them to make meaningful contributions to our RUHS community. By promoting cultural awareness, respect, and inclusivity, we create an environment where everyone feels valued and connected. 
Nothing brings people closer than celebrating together during a holiday, and NCHS embraced this idea amidst one of the most important observations of the lunar calendar, the Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year is the biggest festival for the Chinese people. It's based off of the Lunar New Year calendar, and it is a festival among many of the Asian countries of the world. And we are specifically celebrating Chinese New Year with our Chinese classes and NCHS this year. Through events like Chinese New Year celebrations, we have the opportunity to educate and engage our school community, ultimately fostering a sense of unity and mutual respect. It's about creating an enriching experience that goes beyond the classroom and leaves a lasting impact on our students' understanding of cultural traditions. The National Chinese Honor Society recognizes that the best way to help someone understand a culture outside of their own is to let them see firsthand what makes their tradition so special. For this reason, students from all of the Chinese classes were invited to taste a variety of Chinese cuisine, tie Chinese knots, learn greetings for the Chinese New Year, practice their Chinese calligraphy, and make their own dumplings at NCHS's celebration of the arrival of the Year of the Dragon. The main goal of this event was to spread the outreach of NCHS to the rest of the school. We are really excited to be here on campus. We are a bit of a newer club, so we really want to share the Chinese culture and language with all of the faculty and students on this campus. The best part about National Chinese Honor Society is the sense of camaraderie among its members. It not only inspires students to delve deeper into Chinese language and culture, but also encourages them to support each other and grow as a community. We have a big demographic of students here that are from that community. So we do plan for this Chinese New Year celebration to be an annual event. So please look forward to this happening again next year for the next Chinese New Year. And we are happy to share everything with everyone. For RUTV, I'm Grace Carroll. Wow, that was so cool. I'm definitely looking to go next year. I love how our Seahawks came together, just like our athletes do. Let's go to sports and see just how good our athletes have been doing. Welcome back to RUTV Sports. I'm Ella Rogers. And I'm Mackenzie Baird. Last Friday, boys basketball faced off against Notre Dame in the semifinals of CIF Division I. They fought a tough battle but unfortunately lost 67-60, to finishing 24-6. and It's not over yet though as they're still going to compete and stay. Good luck, boys. Boys baseball beat El Segundo 3-2 last Saturday. Senior Nick Aguirre went 2-4 for four, and senior Sunny Hurtado went 1-2, for two, both scoring one run apiece. Our boys take on West this Friday, so be sure to show up and support our boys. Good luck. Girls across had a great start to their season this past Saturday, beating Edison 16-6 at home. Senior captain Kylie Thompson led the team with six goals and three assists, earning herself player of the game. The girls play again tomorrow at 10 a.m. against San Juan Hills and 1 p.m. against San Clemente, so be sure to show up and support our Seahawks as they take on their fellow top 10 teams. This past Saturday, boys lacrosse lost against St. Francis 13-4. Their next game is at home on Wednesday, so be sure to show up and support as they face off against Gundo. Softball opened up their season with a big win against Seagerstrom 9-2. Sophomore Abby Lou started off strong with a solo home run, but their game was neck and neck until the fifth inning. Lewis hit another home run to center field, extending the lead to 5-1. Then she followed up with another home run, accompanied by senior captains Kayla Rose and Skylar Subizma, who had two hits apiece. Congrats, girls. Boys and girls track won their 4x800, 800, 1600 SMR, high jump, long jump, and girls discus at the Zamperini Invitational. Congrats to all of our track athletes on an amazing start to the season. Wrestling's very own Kinsley Conrad placed third at Masters and made it to state. This made Conrad the first person in five years to do so. Congrats, Kinsley, and we can't wait to see how you do. Last Friday, our game day cheer team competed in their last competition in Anaheim. The girls competed at the USA Nationals and ended up advancing the finals, scoring a 97.1 and taking home the win. Congrats, girls. Next Thursday, Swim has their first meet at El Segundo. Good luck, guys. That's all for this week. Good luck to all of our student athletes. And, and go Seahawks! 
Good job, Seahawk athletes. We can always count on you to keep us entertained. Speaking of entertainment, let's go to Kendall with the second installment of Pop Corner. Hey Seahawks, I'm Kendall and welcome back to Pop Corner. This past week, the official Met Gala theme, The Garden of Time, was finally confirmed in a post from the Met Gala's Instagram to celebrate the opening of the new exhibit, Sleeping Beauties, Reawakening Fashion. In that post, the event organizers also announced four A-list celebrities have been selected as co-chairs for this year's ball. Zendaya, making her long-awaited return to the Met Gala's red carpet since her last appearance in 2019, will be in attendance with Chris Hemsworth, Bad Bunny, and J-Lo for May 6th esteemed event. In more celebrity news, Beyonce recently announced her new album, Act Two, in a Verizon Super Bowl commercial alongside actor and comedian Tony Hale. This album is set to be released on March 29th. However, last Monday, Beyonce released two new songs to get fans excited. Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages were immediate hits and have gone viral on various social media platforms as the famed singer-songwriter has decided to make a country twist to her music transitioning from her typical R&B records. Finally, the new Sony movie, Madam Web, was released this past Valentine's Day has been disappointing audiences with what people are saying is some of the worst script work they've ever seen. Viewers quickly took to social media with their reviews of the movie absolutely tearing it to shreds and creating a whopping 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. One letterbox user posted that, not only is Madam Web set in 2003, but it may have set the entire superhero genre back that far as well. Well, Seahawks, what do you think of Madam Web? Is it really as bad as critics are saying? Pop on over at Redondo Union TV on Instagram to let us know. This has been Pop Corner. I'm Kendall Keenan, and we'll see you next time. Seniors, California Adventure Disneyland Grad Night tickets are officially on sale. Tickets must be purchased in person at the ASB Finance Office with a signed permission slip. Tickets are $180 with senior sticker and $190 without. Bus assignments are first come first served. If you want to be assigned to the same bus as your friends, buy tickets at the same time. Deadline to purchase is Friday, March 15th and tickets are non-refundable. Stop by the Comedy Sports Match tonight where they take ASB at the auditorium. It starts at 7 p.m. and tickets are $5 with ASB and 7 without. We hope to see you there. Special congratulations to our academic decathlon team for placing 7th in their regional competition and qualifying for state. Captain Tao Levy was the highest scoring decathlete on the team, winning two silver, silver medals and a bronze medal. You guys made RUHS proud. Our school will be hosting an in-person invention convention on February 23, 2024 at 3.30 p.m. in the Noble Gallery. If you're interested in participating, check the link in your school email for details. Well, Seahawks, that's all for this week's broadcast. I'm Sienna Lewis. And I'm Eleni Walko. Have a, a great weekend, and remember to keep, keep on soaring, Seahawks.